This is breaking news today. U.S. defense officials confirm a Chinese warship stole an American underwater drone. What's more, the Chinese did this right under the noses of the U.S. crew on board the USNS Bowditch as the crew of the Bowditch tried to collect the drone. With me now, global risk analyst John Sitalides. John, thanks for being here. Pleasure to be with you, Liz. John, this is quite the story breaking today. In my understanding, this is what happened. The U.S. Navy ship Bowditch was picking up two underwater drones in the South China Sea. A Chinese ship had been shadowing the Bowditch for several days. When the Bowditch drew close to this drone that they were to pick up, the Chinese put a small boat in the water before the Bowditch did and beat the U.S. crew to the drone. That's absolutely correct, Liz. And uh, we're still trying to figure out how this has all come together and, in particular, why. Is there a message that China is trying to send to the United States, to its regional allies? And this ties into two larger themes, Liz. One is that China, for several years now, has been asserting really uh, completely illegitimate claims over the South China Sea, hundreds of miles off of its coastline. And there are five other countries that also have claims to that territory. And keep in mind, one quarter of the world's commerce, $5 trillion worth, traverses this sea every year. There's probably about a trillion dollars worth of oil and natural gas in the seabed. And about 15% of the world's fisheries are in this one area. But on a larger scale, the United States is the reason why we enjoy not only prosperity here, but we share prosperity with our allies around the world because we protect the global commons, freedom to navigate sea and airspace and international waters and international air. China is threatening that system, and the U.S. now has to figure out a way to make very clear it won't tolerate this. Right, and I guess the question that everyone has right now when we're watching this story unfold is, is this uh, act by China, is this retaliation for President-elect Trump's phone call with Taiwan that China's alleging violates the One China policy? I think there are several issues at play here, Liz. One is, keep in mind, President Obama is still President of the United States, and he will be for the next several weeks. So There's nothing President-elect Trump can do. And it was President Obama who, about four years ago, declared a so-called pivot or rebalance of U.S. military forces away from the Middle East and 10 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan and over to Asia, uh, which caused great consternation in China because they feel that they have their historical ambitions to become the great revitalized power in that part of the world. And keep in mind, Liz, the Chinese have been growing their defense budget at startling rates. It's quadrupled in the last 15 years. So this is part of a longer-term defense and power projection strategy on the part of the Chinese. But they're changing the facts on the ground in the South, South China Sea. While President Obama is president, they could have waited until the end of January or right. February if they wanted to directly challenge President Trump. But I do think this issue and a number of uh, a variety of issues involving sovereignty in the South China Sea are going to be on President Trump's plate over the next four years. Right. I, I think that is very interesting. I would agree with your analysis that it's interesting that it was done right now rather than a month from now because it would have been a very different response. And maybe that's very telling. Maybe they knew it would be a very different response. Another part of the incident that happened uh, itself is that the U.S. ship radioed the Chinese ship and they said, hey, that's, you know, sovereign American property that you have just in case you were mistaken on what you picked up. And the Chinese didn't respond to that until they said, they didn't acknowledge that comment. They said that they were going to resume their normal operations and they didn't say anything whatsoever about the drone. John, do you expect Obama to do anything? I believe President Obama must respond. The question is, how does one respond in a way that balances out, again, what are the clear need to establish a global commons and protect freedom of navigation through international airspace and international waters without unnecessarily provoking uh, the Chinese into escalating, and then we have something that could spin out of control. There are several options, I believe, Liz, in President Obama's uh, portfolio right now. One is to potentially uh, enhance uh, military escorts of all surveillance uh, sea craft in the South China Sea. Uh, we can also bolster our U.S. naval presence in the South China Sea, including in those areas that the Chinese claim for themselves, which international law doesn't recognize. We might even go a step further, Liz, and seek to disrupt Chinese electronic communications in international waters. But to make very clear, this cannot stand as it is right now, but we have to be very careful. It's not a vital national interest, 
but it does affect international trade and international commerce, and we need to respond, I would say, speedily. Right, because I, I mean, I think you make a good point here that it's about the, the whole issue of the South China Sea because when you have a quarter of the world's commerce that goes through there, $5 trillion a year. I mean, if they want to be in control of that, that's going to change the entire balance of power of our world, and perhaps that's their intention here. John, let me go back to one thing that you said before. You talked about potentially bulking up the presence of the United States Navy in the South China Sea. I think it's worth noting that this ship, the United States Navy ship Bowditch, this is a civilian manned ship. This is not a warship. The crew on this ship are not uh, part of our military. There was no, reportedly, classified information on this drone. It was purely oceanic uh, observation, if I'm not mistaken. You're absolutely correct, Liz. And this is one of the things that makes this such a delicate situation. If you think about it, it is in some ways a non-hostile act by China, but it's going to merit ideally a political response that can be worked out. But it's very difficult to see how that's done right away because the Chinese don't have any face-saving way out of this. They've directly challenged the United States in international waters. And if the Americans are able to work out a political modus vivendi with the Chinese on these types of issues, that'd be wonderful. But I really don't see this. And I think part of successful diplomacy is backing up diplomacy with the threat of military force. It's what we haven't seen for many years coming out of Washington. And I think it's one of the reasons why our adversaries feel that they can threaten our interests and our forces with greater impunity. And I hope that one of the things that we'll see going forward is when the Trump administration conducts diplomacy, it's always with the full force of backed up military power to make sure that diplomacy can succeed. And this may be one of the first steps that we can do to move in that direction. Right, and to put that a little more bluntly, I think this is the result. This is the result of weak leadership around the world where our adversaries know they can tweak us as long as it's not hostile enough to actually ga uh, garner a military response. They can uh, do a provocative action like this and not suffer any consequences from it. John, I certainly hope that this changes under, uh, under the next president, but I don't see anything changing in the next month or so beforehand. Thanks for being here today.